Meat Boy is back. Today we are going to make a chopped cheese, a sandwich specific to some of New York's bodegas, which is kind of like a deli, except you can get a bunch of household goods you might need. Classically, the chopped cheese is just beef, onions, and cheese on a roll with mayo and ketchup. You might see some people adding lettuce and tomatoes, but you know, realistically for some bodegas, they can have large volumes of fresh produce every day. And there's also less of a margin of error on quality control for things like mayo and ketchup. And this reminds me a little bit of a bacon, egg, and cheese with ketchup. Uh, that's what I used to always go to the bodegas for, although I've never actually had a chopped cheese. Since we want to make a healthy, high quality version of this, we have to improve the nutrition of each individual ingredient. Therefore, we have to make pretty much everything from scratch. That includes a mayonnaise, and I saw some decent looking tomatoes and lettuce at the market, so we might try a sandwich with that as well. For the chopped cheese component, we have the best quality bread you can find in your supermarket, or you can make it yourself. This isn't like a classic roll or hero that you'll see in the deli, but Bread Alone, which is uh, an upstate New York bakery, makes the best quality bread I've ever seen. It's literally just organic wheat flour, water, and salt, which is a natural fermentation. Most other bread has additives, and you certainly want to go organic on everything to remove the agrochemical, the herbicide and pesticide concerns. So, you know, this is more like Italian bread, but since it is the highest quality bread we have access to, this is what I'm going to be using. Uh, the only thing we're not making from scratch is the ketchup, which, you know, you can make it yourself, but to me, it's not really worth the effort, and I don't really eat stuff like this. We have all-purpose seasoning. This is kind of like the little secret that they always put on the chopped cheese while they're making it. Of course, we have an organic onion to chop up. Salt seasons the meat. We have some cheddar from Frankie's Free Range Meat, raw milk cheese, higher quality, more nutrient dense, tastes a little better. You, know, you have to grate it and do a little prep work, but it's totally worth it. And then I just have a tiny bit of Finlandia butter to saute the onions and burgers in. Main component, the beef. We have grass-fed local ground beef from Frankie's Free Range Meat. I'm gonna form this into burger patties. Uh, this is two pounds, so what I did was I cut this in half, and then I cut this into quarters, and then I had some nice four ounce patties that I just you know, formed into balls and flattened out. Ooh. Onto the mayonnaise, we're using Wagyu beef tallow as the fat component, which again, we have on Frankie's Free Range Meat. We're gonna have some nice labels for this in the upcoming weeks. I have a local farm egg, corn-free, soy-free, that's what you want. Tiny bit of mustard. I don't really like this brand, but someone recommended it and I still have a lot of it. And for vinegar, we're going to use apple cider vinegar and of course a little salt. So all we need to do for this mayonnaise is, is whip it up in the blender. And then the tomato and the lettuce, which again is optional. So I'm going to do all the prep work and then we will form the chopped cheese. So that prep work involves forming the burgers into patties, grating some cheese, chopping up the onions, making the mayonnaise and slicing the tomatoes and lettuce. For the mayo, we have to melt the tallow. And if you guys haven't had our Wagyu tallow on Frankie's Range meat, as you can tell, it's really soft. It melts really easily. It has this deep nutty flavor. And the reason for that is because the grass-fed Wagyu cattle have more monounsaturated fat. While the tallow is melting, we can add our other components. So we want about half a teaspoon of mustard, and most mayonnaise recipes call for a whole tablespoon of mustard, which I think is way too much. One tablespoon of vinegar. And one whole egg. Hefty pinch of salt. Tallow's melted. All right, so there we have our mayonnaise. And if you have a hard time getting your mayonnaise to emulsify, like if it keeps separating, uh, what you could do is just keep some tallow in the fridge or freezer, or you could just even add some frozen or cold butter and that'll kind of bring it back together. So I got my pan on high heat, I got about a tablespoon of butter, get the onions going. While well, that's heating up, I'll put the mayo and ketchup on the spread. 
Any organic ketchup from the supermarket's fine. Onions are starting to brown a little bit and we just want to sweat them so the pan's hot enough. And you want to put in the dry burger patties. You want the patties to be dry and thin so it cooks quickly and that you get a nice brown crust on each side. Usually at the delis they'll have these big metal spatulas. That would make this a lot easier but I'm using a spoon. So flip this over. So you got that nice brown crust for flavor. I'm gonna put a pinch of salt on the onions. Then I'm gonna cut up the burger. Press it down a bit. And we'll season that with some salt and our all-purpose seasoning. Uh, if you don't want to buy this or make this, it's onion, pepper, garlic, parsley, celery seed, tomato powder, guar gum, basil, thyme, sage, oregano, coriander. So, you know, you could just take whatever spices you have in your cabinet, throw a little bit of each of them on this. Uh, sometimes they also use like chicken bouillon, but what you could do instead of chicken bouillon is take a little bit of organic beef broth. That'll add a lot of flavor here. And that'll also help us deglaze this pan. So you got nice brown crust on that meat. Nice caramelized onions. Now we'll lower the heat. Take our raw American cheddar. A little more broth just to steam it up. And then we'll cover this for maybe two or three minutes to melt the cheese. So that was maybe a minute and 30 seconds. I'm gonna kind of like cut this in half down the middle just so it separates a little easier. And then we'll put this onto our bread. Nice thing about this, it's messy. You know, you don't have to worry about the presentation being nice. You don't have to worry about getting a super nice caramelized crust on a burger patty or a steak, which is kind of hard to do. Just get a little crust, chop it up, melt the cheese, throw it on the bread. While these cool off, I'm gonna make two more sandwiches that we can use for the lettuce and tomato. One thing that makes these bodegas special is the caramelization on their griddles. So this second batch is probably gonna taste a little bit better. You can see we have you know, all that brown crust and flavor on the burger and on the onions. So the second one has so much more flavor. Look at that deep brown caramelized juice at the bottom there. So I expect these to taste fairly different. No ketchup on the second one, just mayonnaise. Because we're gonna do the tomato. I let this cool off for like two or three minutes then I'll put the toppings on. Couple slices of tomato. Tiny bit of lettuce. Now I made four of these because this is going to be my sister's lunch for like a week, but let's try each of them. Let's see how they turned out. Uh, some of you might be wondering why I didn't toast the bread, and I think just with the mayo and all the fat and the flavors, you don't really have to toast the bread. And you know, in these bodegas and these delis, they they don't toast the roll. Maybe they'll warm it up a little bit on the flat top, but you can if you want to. I'll tell you guys right now, this was way too much work to make a bunch of sandwiches. This has taken me like two hours between the prep, the cooking, the cleaning, the ingredients. But let's see how this tastes, if it was worth it. I'm going to go with the classic first with the ketchup and mayonnaise. And I mean, this is obviously way more meat than a typical chopped cheese. But, you know, towards, towards the back, there's not as much meat. But, you know, I think most of the time you'll see, you know, 60, 70% bread as opposed to all this meat. I mean, it's a cheeseburger. It's a good cheeseburger. I, I guess it's about as good as a sandwich is going to get. But let's try the, the lettuce and tomato. Now, this looks a little more balanced. And there's less meat on this one, so... This might be better. These are both very good sandwiches. I prefer the classic one with just the ketchup and mayo, but only by a slight bit. Both very, very, very good. Uh, the adjustments I would make would be 
adjusting the ratios of meat to cheese to bread, mainly less meat, more cheese, and on the tomato and lettuce, you could also slice the tomatoes a bit thinner, but overall, very, very, very good. I think the only reason that I almost liked the lettuce and tomato one more was because we had all those flavors and that caramelization in the pan. So definitely try this out. I think this would be great to give to your family, you know, to introduce them to really, really high quality ingredients and the difference that they can make in something like a New York Bodega Classic. And it's kind of funny because you know, this sandwich you can charge $15, $20 for, but those regular chopped cheese would be like three, four, five dollars. So thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, definitely let me know if you have any questions or suggestions down in the comments below. Uh, we'll be doing a live stream later on the channel Frank Tufano, some live vegan critiques. So I'm excited to join you guys there. Outside of that, I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.